I talked to him for about, I don't know, about 30 minutes while he was traveling here. Uh, this man means the world to me. And uh, I've looked up to him for a long time. Um, if I tweet it, I'd be a follower. But I, I don't tweet, and I'm not a tweeter, you know, so uh, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, this man is uh, no stranger to Elkhorn. Back in 1995, God used Dr. Steve Ayers in a phenomenal way. We, we started out here at Elkhorn, that old sanctuary over there. Left there and went to South Camelsville. God just kept exploding and giving us manna from heaven. Left South Camelsville and went to Camelsville Auditorium. And uh, great, a lot of healing. Uh, salvations was the main thing. And I told you, that's our course in life. You can make all the money you want to and you can die and go to hell. You can be the poorest man and go to heaven. That's right. That's right. And so uh, manna will fail. It'll fall. But uh, this man is uh, one of my spiritual fathers. I love this man. I thank the world for this man. You will be blessed tonight. Uh, he's seen a lot. He started out at uh, Hillview back in 1991. Came in with 30 members, a $500,000 debt. Southern Baptist Convention told him to close the doors and uh, just lock it up. Well, Steve Ayers is hard-headed. And... Uh, he just believes the Bible. And he said he knows that God has a dream for the church. The church is the answer for this community and this world. And uh, so God commissioned Dr. Steve Ayers to take Hillview Heights in 1991 with 30 members. I don't know how many they're averaging now. It's up in the thousands. And, uh, yeah, give God a praise for that because God, God did that. God did that. And watch this. If God done that for Steve Ayers, he'll do it here. Somebody accept that tonight. He'll do it here. And he is going to do it here. So uh, I want to pray a blessing over this man of God before he uh, enters the, uh, the throne room of God. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, in, in your name. God, just keep doing what you're doing, saving souls. And uh, you're the best at that. You're the only one that can do that. And so, Lord, I just praise you tonight, Lord, for Steve. I know he's got a now word. I know, Lord, that back in 1995, God, you gave him a word. But, Lord, we need a word for 2013. We need to go forward, God. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that, God, that your spirit would just keep working. Keep drawing people, Lord Jesus. Keep filling this house with your presence, Lord. And, God, we, uh, we come expecting tonight. Lord, I thank you for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But, Lord, uh, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing now. You're a now God. So, Lord, we commission this man of God tonight to break the bread of life. And, Lord, I know we come with a word. Bless this man. Bless his ministry. Bless his wife. Bless his children. Bless his church, dear God. And, Lord, I pray that 2013 will never be the same. In Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you all for uh, thank you all for the invitation to be here tonight. I'm always excited to be at Elkhorn Baptist Church because I never know how long I'm going to stay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a crazy place. In fact, uh, my family loves uh, Campbellsville so much that my son decided to marry a Campbellsvillian. So uh, whether y'all like it or not, now I'm part of the family. And so uh, it's it's been great to see how how God has moved in this place and. And I was, as I was coming up the road, I was having those memories. You know, and your pastor is very gracious. He's pumped up with the Holy Spirit, but, he, but he's very gracious. And, and I noticed when I first came to Elkhorn, they were talking about this young, wild pastor. It's the way I was introduced. And now as I go to places, I'm introduced by these young pastors as the father in their, of, in their ministry. <laughs> so that's just a nice way of saying, brother, you're getting old. <laughs> but let me tell you, the older I get, the more excited I am about what Jesus Christ is doing in the lives of people. And so tonight, I, I hope, uh, I, I've, I've been pumped up all day. I, I work with a group of pastors, so they've been coming in, and they said, what you so fired up about tonight? I said, I'm going to Elkhorn. They said, Elkhorn, where's that? I said, in Campbellsville. I said, you remember those revivals I told you about at Campbellsville University that exploded when we woke up early in the morning and just God did all kinds of crazy things? I said, every time I come back to Elkhorn, it is a pivotal moment to me, and it reminds me, God will do what he said he's going to do. God will do what he said he's going to do. And so when I pulled in the parking lot, my hair kind of stood up on the back of my head because I said, this is my kind of church. 
I said, I like a church where there's more pickup trucks than there is cars. I said, I, I, said, I like a church where instead of seeing dress shoes, I see cowboy boots. And I said, I love a church. Now, brother, let me tell you, Greg, you don't get that kind of praise and worship in New York City. Now, God gave the blues to the south. And I do head up north occasionally like the prophet Amos from the south to the northern kingdom. But I'm always glad when God says it's time to go back home. <laughs> and so I'm glad to be in Kentucky. I'm glad that Jesus Christ is in Kentucky. And I'm glad that Elkhorn Baptist Church is in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Now, I, I kind of want to break it down a little bit because the mission hadn't changed from 20-something years ago. And, and you all are following that mission. And I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me loud and clear tonight, because I might preach. You are one of the few churches. Did you hear that? Few. F-E-W. Isn't that the way you spell that? Few churches in the state of Kentucky that care about lost people going to hell. And so here's what I pray, that you all will continue to stir the fire. I'm excited. You've seen 500 people come to know Jesus Christ in the past five years. Amen. Now, we got to be careful. You, you're on the careful moment. You're on the careful moment. Now, I love you, Pastor. I love him. I love him. Now, some of y'all don't like him, and that's okay. <laughs> you know why you don't like him? He's doing what God's called him to do. Amen. He's doing what God's called him to do. I, I have a lot of people don't like me. The, li the list is long and distinguished. Church people do not like me by normal. Denominational people do not like me a lot. But I tell you who loves me, sinners. I was good at it. That's the first thing. And second, you know what? Because I bring them good news. And I want to tell you, I, I'm, okay with, I'm okay with organized religious people not liking me because they didn't like Jesus. I, I, I'm okay with those who want to do it their way, not liking me. They, they didn't like Jesus. You know who loved Jesus? Sinners in need of hope and grace. Now, I hope I can encourage you, and I know I'm going to encourage you because I'm going to open up the Word of God, and in the Word of God is encouragement for His people. Now, some of you here tonight, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have opportunity to receive Him into your life, okay? Nobody in here can save you. I love the praise and worship tonight. Thanks, team. Thanks for using your gifts, your talents, what God's given you. But you know what? We can shout and yell and cheer, and nobody will get saved. There's only one person in here that can save you, and that's Jesus Christ. So, so the, reason, the reason there is energy in this room is, is not because it helps people get saved. It's because the saved are rejoicing. Now, when the, when the saved rejoice, the lost get curious. Ah, I want to thank some of you that are a little more seasoned. It means you've lived a few more decades than others. You've allowed God to change your mind on how church should be done. Okay? There's not a right way and a wrong way to do church. But there is a way to be wrongly focused. And if church is not about the master then it's not a church. I, I really don't care what denominational tag you, you, you label yourself with because I think on the day the trumpet blows, the Baptists will be gone, the Catholics will be gone, the Methodists will be gone, the Pentecostals will be gone, the non-denominational will be gone that really are a denomination. Guess who will be left? Those that follow Jesus. How many in the house we got tonight that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and are following Jesus? Following Jesus. That's where it changes. Follow Jesus. Amen. Well, let's go, let's go to the Word. All right, y'all standing on the promises. So guess what that means? Guess what? Now, here's some good news. I already know you can make a difference. Isn't that cool? Because Jesus is in you. And see, tonight what I want to do, I want to remove some lies Okay, you're right, Greg, you're right. The media, uh, I mean, you're going to see where I stand. Most of the media in this moment of time lies. Okay, now don't be disturbed about that, and don't go chasing rabbits. It don't matter. Okay, here, here's what you need to understand, church. Lost people act lost. 
They, they marry weird. They do all kinds of weird things. And here's why. They're lost. And I never have figured out why saved people expect lost people to act saved. If you're lost, you drink a lot more than when you're saved. Usually if you're saved, you just sneak. If you're lost, they go crazy about it, okay? Because watch this. They have nothing else. Do you remember that time in your life? How many of you remember a time in your life when all you had is what you felt, what you thought, and what you were? And if you live long enough, there comes a moment in time where, you, where the Spirit really starts drawing you. Grace starts drawing you. And you come to this realization, what I'm living in is not enough. Something is not there. This won't work. And we got story after story after story in the Bible where people become exhausted with who they are so they can find who Jesus is. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to take you to Matthew, to a very interesting parable. This parable is going to bother us because guess who spoke it? Jesus. Now let's talk about Jesus. He's the Son of God. We just sang great theology tonight. Born of a virgin. Son of God, God in flesh, God incarnated, the way, the truth, and the life. It's Jesus. It's always about who? Jesus. So guess who speaks this parable? It's not Paul. It's not Timothy. It's not a disciple. It's not James. It's not a brother. It's not Jesus' mama Mary. It's Jesus. So if you don't like it, don't email me. Talk to him. And what I'm going to show you tonight, this is the natural order of life. No government can bend it, reshape it, or make it work a different way. Young people, I love you all. I've raised two of you all. Okay? So I'm really invested in your generation. I want you to listen to me because from the moment you came out of the womb, you have been lied to over and over and over again, and some of you believe it. You know what they told you? That everybody was equal. I have searched the Scripture to find the Scripture teaching us that everybody is equal. Have you found that in the Word of God? Uh-uh. But some of you all have even signed petitions over equality. We're fixing to trash our whole nation over this one lie the devil's put into spin that everybody's equal. Because it's how we define equality. We believe everybody's the same. Now what idiot thought that up? Look around this room. Do you see anybody that look, it, it looks exactly alike? Even a twin doesn't look exactly like. One of their ears will be higher than the other. You know what I mean? In other words, here's what I want you to know. You can't mess with God's natural order. Okay? It'll kill you every time. And here's what I want you to know. Jesus tells a parable. He says, first of all, you can only be invited into the kingdom by the master. Who do you think the master is? Jesus. So tonight, if you're not in the kingdom, I want to welcome you to the kingdom. You might be asking this question, well, why in the world should I be saved? Number one leading reason is you're dead without him. You say, well, Pastor Steve, I feel good. I look good. A doctor told me I'm living. No, I'm not talking about the dead. You are spiritually dead. And you can have everybody like you. You can have, you know, 14,000 Facebook friends and have a Twitter twoter or whatever following where everybody listens to every one of your stupid comments. It doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> I don't understand all this Facebook stuff. My wife's got one of them Facebook things. I don't have one. I don't want one. I, they got me a Twitter account, but I never tweet. Because I told him that sounded a little gross to me anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and so, 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 but every once in a while, people put on their Facebook like, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah, but, but watch this, hold on. It tells me something about us as a people. We are totally obsessed with ourselves. We are so obsessed with ourselves that we can't hear, see, and find Jesus. And we get this way in the church. Now, I know, Pastor Brian, you've never had these encounters, but I'm talking about other brothers I've had to talk to. 
people in their congregation will come up to them and say, Pastor, I don't feel like we need to do this. Let me give you a response to that. Who cares how you feel? <laughs> Pastor, I don't think we ought to do this. Who cares what you think? This ain't your church. This isn't my church. I didn't die for this church. I didn't rise again. There's one guy we ought to be concerned of what he thinks. Guess who it is? Jesus. And then there's always this one. You know, always you got the feeling, the thinking. And then there's the guy that says, well, I'm going to. Because I'm going to. Because I think I can do it. I, I'll will it to happen. There's three things that kill us all the time. What we think, what we feel, and what we will. And sin messes with all three of those areas. Hello? How many of y'all find that if you live by your feelings, you'll live on a roller coaster? If you live by your thoughts, if you live long enough, you'll find out. I used to work with an old farmer, and he'd always say this, you thought wrong. That's what you get for thoughting. That's what he'd say all the time. Never forget it. We were supposed to set a fence one day, about an acre-long fence, and it got a little hot. And so instead of, you all, you all have done fencing, and about halfway through, we was all kids. So instead of uh, following the corner post, which took a little more time to go up there and line up, we just started following post after post after post because we thought it would be faster. Well, I mean, that fence looked like a snake. <laughs> And he said, he said, did I take, uh, yes, sir, you told us to go off the corner post, but we thought, and he goes, that's what you get for thought in a crooked fence. I've never forgotten that. And you know what? Sometimes what we get for thought in is a crooked life. Now, we've thought a long time ago that equality is the key to life, but it's not the key to life. Let me tell you what the key to life is, is investment. Now, here's what I want to show you. Jesus said there was a master. They were asking him questions. Well, what's the kingdom of heaven like? He said, well, it's like this. He said, it's like a master. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Now, let, let me make sense about this, okay? You have a master. You have some people that lead, okay? But this master is the ultimate master, and he's got servants. Guess what we are in the church? Servants of the what? Great master. So let me give you this word. Nobody does it better than Jesus. Hello? Nobody does it better than Jesus. Hello? No matter where you are, nobody does it better than what? Jesus. Jesus. And I'm telling you, we ought to be a testimony to Jesus in everything that we do. My wife and I, this fall, we got to have some R&R. &R. Our kids are out of the house now. Praise God. Give God the glory. <laughs> if, if, if your kids hadn't left yet and they're over 18, throw them out. It's a great life. Okay? So it's time to go sometime, all right? I know y'all don't like me saying that. Y'all want to stay around till you're 30 in the basement telling everybody what you think. That's why I don't read blogs. It's from some 30-year-old dude living in his mama's basement in his boxer shorts telling everybody how to run the world. I'm like, why don't you get a job at the Minute Mart, start there, and we'll work our way up. Okay, you got to go sometime and be somebody. Make sense? Come on, we got to wake up. I'm in familiar. This is friendly territory here. You ought to hear what happens to me when I say stuff like this on the East Coast. Because let me tell you, they live to be politically correct. If, if you all have noticed, I'm not very correct, <laughs> not very political. Because guess what? I read the Bible, and guess what it said? The truth will set you free. Yeah. The truth will set you free. There's a lot of freedom in this church. Now, you all got to keep it. Now, here's what I want you to know. God has appointed you. I remember that first revival. He started the appointment in that first revival. Things broke loose here. You all remember that? Crazy stuff, you know? And as soon as that revival's over, I remember telling Pastor Hunt, I said, Brother, now listen, the devil's going to come against this. And what happened, brother? Boom, here he comes. And Elkhorn kind of goes, blah, blah, blah. but watch, the last five years, the word that God speaks will come through. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So when I walked in here, I wasn't surprised, Pastor, because God said it was going to happen here. Now, that's not the question. It is going to happen here. The question is, are you going to be a part of the happening? See, I, I don't know what Christians do all the time. They're like, God, please come. If I was God, I'd go, I'm already here. Listen. <laughs> I'm going to be here whether you ask me to be here or not, says the Lord. Now, are you going to do what God says to do? Now, watch. we got three servants. They're all servants, but they all get something different. Now, you say, why? Cause. How's that for a great theologian? 
Because that's what the master gave him. Now, here's what I want you to know. Not everybody's got the same thing. And here's what I want you to know. Not everybody's supposed to have the same thing. You know, Greg, it's Greg. And I got it right, didn't I? Greg, Greg. Now, if I got a guitar up here and your white guitar and I stand up here and I try to sing the blow, blues, everybody's going to leave. Because God didn't give me that. So I can pray from now until Jesus returns, and I'm not going to be able to play the guitar and sing the blues because he gave you that. Right. See what I'm saying? And he gave his beautiful girl that voice. And he gave you, I saw you over there. You, he gave you that? <laughs> Make sense? And, and he gave everybody something. Is somebody listening to me tonight? He gave everybody something. Okay, first prayer moment. You need to start right now asking God to show you what he gave you. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. I want you all to keep reaching people for Jesus. Man, I, I celebrate 100 baptisms with you. You don't, you don't know how excited I am? May you have 200 this year. Amen. Now watch this. Some of you are going to go like this. Well, are we going to have a building big enough to house them? Yeah. This place holds a lot of people. Go four or five times. Brian's full of energy. Preach him till he drops on Sunday. <laughs> if, if, listen, his wife will love you if he can't talk on Monday. It'll be a day of rest for her. She'll love Monday. <laughs> In fact, Elizabeth, she was so excited when I, when I got back out on the road. They was laughing. They said, well, Elizabeth, uh, they, they said, we really appreciate it. She said, no, take him. Take him. She said, he preaches all the time, and I'm tired of hearing him. Y'all need to hear him. In, in other words, don't, don't limit God to a building. Just take what he's given you. And, and get this heartbeat. This is my heartbeat. That everybody in Campbellsville that is not saved will be saved before we die. Now, if that's your mission, okay? Now, it's going to get crazy. If the fire starts burning hot at the house, it's going to go everywhere. But don't worry about everywhere. Just get the fire burning hot at the house. See, these churches, all these pastors now that run around saying, well, we want to go to Africa. I said, why don't you buy, baptize somebody where you are? You know how to talk Kentuckian, but you don't know how to talk Swahili. <laughs> they said, Ayers, you want to go to Africa? I said, no. Nope. I said, I'm a redneck preacher, <laughs> and I'm in the right church tonight. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But hold on. Hold on. Somebody can talk Swahili, guess what? But guess what's happening in my church? I got a group of Chinese students. They all met Jesus Christ, all 15 of them. They met Jesus Christ. They were there at Western for four years, met Jesus Christ, came full of the Holy Spirit, and they went back to China. Amen. We commissioned 15 missionaries and never had to do language training. <laughs> we never had to do cultural training. God brought them to get saved and then sent them back so others might be saved. You see how it works? Yeah. You better look at what you have. Now, let's be honest. Not everybody's using what they have right now, right? Wait, Brian, I'm going to blow you away. You see that thermometer right there? You know where you're trying to raise money? You, you, you could take it down if everybody just tithed. <laughs> and then lost people won't be going. Are they checking the temperature in the room or what's going on? And see, see, lost people don't only do it all that. Did y'all realize that? You say, how do you know? I'm in a debt-free church because when we built our last facility, I got tired of all this rigging and rolling around and all that stuff. I just don't do that real well. I walked to the pulpit, and I said, the Word of God says tithe. We're not tithing. Obviously, we're not tithing. I said, I just passed by three Jaguars and a Hummer on the way in here. We ain't tithing. <laughs> I said, just tithe and see what God does. Guess what? God paid off the building 30 days after we went in with a tithe. With a tithe. With a what? Tithe. See, God ain't, God's not like Obama. He don't need no more money. He just needs 10%. And he'll never put you $16 trillion in debt either. In fact, he forgives your debts and puts you in motion. Does that make sense? Now, let's grab a hold of this. Man has servant. He gave service. Now, I know some of y'all are bothered because everybody's not equal, but let me tell you what, everybody's somebody, and everybody's important to the master. He called three of his servants. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags of gold, and to another, one bag of gold, each according to his ability. Wow. Now, that's not the way we think today, is it? We say, well, what should happen? Here's the way we think today. The guy who has five ought to give two of his up so everybody can be pretty close to even. 
Well, it, is that not, uh, I mean, I, the, re the reason I love this parable is the math is not real complicated. <laughs> hmm? I mean, we'll get close to being even, right? Huh. But see, one had five, one had how many? Two, and another one had how many? Now, hold on, let me show you the miracle here. Did everybody have something? Now, here's where we mess this, this parable up. We don't understand Jesus because we've been polluted by American thinking. We think if you have more in amount, you have more reward. Isn't that our mindset? I mean, I hear this in Kentucky all the time. Man, if I just win that lottery, man, I'm going to do this and that. And Pastor, we pay at church off if I win that lottery. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, you, you come closer to being struck by lightning than you will winning that lottery. Then I talked to our Kentucky officials. I, I remember when the lottery came in, they remember old, the great late governor Wallace. You know, he had a great plan. We we're going to fund all of our education on a lottery. And I was on that committee, and I looked at, you know, I, and I tried to be reasonable. I said, Governor, I said, listen, I tell you what, I'll go with you on the lottery if you'll go with me on this. you got to make $35,000 or above before you can play the lottery. He didn't bite. Because, see, I told him, I said, the problem with that lottery is, is you're messing with my benevolence. Because I said, people got sense, don't make that investment. And people that don't have any sense and don't have any money, go buy $100 worth of lottery tickets. Right. And here's how much sense they got. Hold on, here's how much sense they got. They'll spend $100 and win 20 and say they won. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think it's wrong to take advantage of people that ain't got no sense. Those of us that believe ought to help people get some sense. Amen. Is that fair? Is that fair? Am I okay? Y'all didn't bring any rocks, did you? Okay, look at here. I, I'll be careful in here. I know it's the Second Amendment church. I'm being careful. I'm being careful. Okay, look at here. The one he gave five, the one he gave two, the one he gave one, everybody got something. Pause. Ask God what you got. A lot of you got salvation in here. That's priceless. A lot of you got all kinds of abilities that have not been put to work yet to glorify God, okay? Quit limiting yourself. There's more than singing and preaching and teaching. I mean, y'all got a great church. I want you to know, y'all got a church similar to Hillview. You got people that can build stuff. You know what our greatest work, mission work is? We, we, I mean, we rival the Mennonites on how fast we can build stuff. Because we got a bunch of bubbles that got one to the Lord. Now, they're not going to sit down and expose great theological principles. They just decided to become them. And they'll get those DeWalt's out, and all, I've never, they look like Tim Tool time. They got this big old trailer. There's no telling what's in there. I just pray it's legal. And when it comes out, <laughs> and when it comes out, watch, I went with them, and all I did is hold boards and pull wires. And, and we, we were down in Tennessee, and it's a little place putting up a Hispanic church, remodeling this Minute Mart into a church. And in 12 hours, the Minute Mart became a church. Wow. But hold on. I want to show you the principle that it works. Because the group of men that had the ability... Now, we didn't, they, these people weren't like, these people knew what to do. People ask me all the time, well, how, how come Hillview does what it does? We put people who know what to do in places that it needs to be done. Thank you, Lord. That's right. yeah. Like people at Hillview that can sing, guess what they do? Sing. Guess what people do that can't sing? Listen. <laughs> people that can preach what? Preach. And people that can't preach, guess what they do? Listen. And people that can build, guess what they do? And people that can't build, hand them boards. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Now, let me show you. If you all are going to mature, here's where you got to mature in, in Christ, in the body of Christ. Be excited about what God has given each other. See, instead of being jealous, be excited. You know, be excited, man. You know, I'm excited that God has blessed some of our businessmen. They tithe better. No, not better. They just, their 10 goes a little further than my 10. You know what I say? Praise God for her. Praise God that she's a successful entrepreneur. You see, the church ought to be the place we celebrate the kingdom of God emerging, not criticize success. Young people, guess what I want for every one of y'all? Be the best human being God's made you to be. Is that cool? Girls, I want you to marry the right man. And if he's a bum, I want you to run. I don't want you to pray for a bum. I want you to run. Does that make sense? Now listen, the reason we're in all this mess is because nobody would tell the truth. Exactly right. 
Yeah, I, I drive a girl's crazy. My daughter, I drive her crazy. She drags something in the house, I look at him. You know what I'm doing first five seconds? I'm seeing if he's a bum or not. You know why? I wish I could tell you it's because I'm loving, because I don't want to pay for her the rest of my life. <laughs> so you got to be ready. you got to think. you got to invest. Hold on, one got five, one got two, one got... Everybody got something, and then guess what? He went away. Now, I want to show you something. Two of them knew who the master was, and one of them never knew his master, even though they all got something. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be a very serious question. How many of y'all realize this? No matter what you do, you're going to die. No matter, I mean, I know some of y'all in the gym trying to hold it up, and if you're my age, you ain't bodybuilding anymore. You are preserving what's left. Okay? And you ought, to, you ought to notice that, guys, if, if, if you men especially ought to notice, have you all noticed how when we were young, everything's upstairs? And as you journey through life, have you all noticed how everything starts sinking? <laughs> you know what God's trying to tell us? You're heading toward the ground. You ain't going to be here for long. <laughs> so there's a period of time in the journey to get it done. Amen? Amen. Now, you senior adults, I don't want to hear from you because you stouted for 40 years that you didn't have time to do ministry, and now you have time. And you don't need to be watching Oprah. She thinks she's God. Yeah. That's right. Oprah thinks she's God. Now, God could lose weight and keep it off. That ought to clue you in. She's not. <laughs> she's not God. <laughs> but hold on. Some of you women believe her more than what I'm going to tell you from the Word of God. You believe her more than what I'm going to tell you from the Word of God. You know why? Because she's nice. Well, the devil's nice. You know what Oprah believes? She does not believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. She believes there are many ways to heaven. The problem is Jesus told the story, though, that there's a master, and that's one way. He didn't say masters, plural. He said master. And one got five, one got two, one got one, and let me show you what they did. Now, church, I hope that you become a 5-2 church, a 5-2 church. That you will act in the same way that the servant who had five bags of gold and two bags of gold answered, okay? One got five bags, one got two bags. I don't know how much they were worth. They were worth five and two. One got one. Let me remind you, everybody got something. Are you all tracking me here? Everybody's got something, so I don't want to hear all this chance. Well, I don't have anything to give God. I'm unworthy. I've never done. That is a lie from the devil. Everybody's got something. You can't be saved and not have something. Guess what some of you called to do? Open the door with a big smile and say, come on in here. That's your one. And if you do that one with excellence, guess what? You're going to have the same reward as the five. Had an old boy in our church named Ronnie. Ronnie had bad health problems. Ronnie had one thing he could do well. He didn't teach. He didn't preach. But he preached and he taught from what he did well. You know what he did? He came in at 5 o'clock in the morning and he made coffee as everything got started. And he did that for six years. Until he passed away. We've had a lot of cool people come through the church, but I only know of one that has a plaque on the kitchen wall in the coffee pot was dedicated to Ronnie Wallace, a man who made coffee for Jesus. And guess what? He wobbled into heaven. The Lord said, Ronnie, welcome in, my good and faithful servant. Yeah, you're going to be surprised. Those who were first and brilliant here in this world, you may not see them in the next. Because they got caught up in what they had instead of who gave it to them. You see, this, this parable is not about talents. It's not about bags of money. It's not about how much you get. It's about do you really know the master? Well, in five, dude, he knew the master because guess what he did? He went at once. Uh, how fast was he going? Here, let me run that by you again. He went at once. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. How fast was he going? How fast, Pastor? At once. So guess what? I just want to let you all know. I don't know if you all are keeping up with current events, but there's a lot of people going to hell right now. You all keeping up with that? Have you all ever read the newspaper? Guess what that newspaper says? We are going to hell. Have you ever listened to the news? It says one thing. We are in hell. <laughs> And there's only one voice that can get people out of it, and that's the voice of the people that are serving the Lord Jesus Christ that say, wait a minute, you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. I have received a Jesus who has saved my sins and put me on a different path. You do not have to what? Go there. 
Because you know what Jesus does? He made every human being. He loves every human being. And any human being is possible. Yes, <coughs> you know who else believed that? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I believe we're going to have a holiday in his name. Because he took what God had given him, the mission that God had given him, and he said, enough is enough all people can receive. See what I'm saying? He's one of my heroes. He's an all people hero. You all be careful, please. There's some theology floating around where it says some can be saved and some aren't going to be saved. Here's what I want to tell you. None of us are God, so it's none of your business, and you don't know who, and I don't know who, and neither do the ones who say they know who know who. Our job is to go at once and put to work what God has given us. Put to work what God has given us. You stay focused on that, and you won't have time to ponder how many angels can ride on the top of a pen. Have you noticed how those who go at once are too busy working to complain, they're too faithful to be irritated by things that are small and irritating. They live their lives in full abundance. So also, the one with two bags of gold, guess what he did? He went at once, and he gained, guess how many more? Two more. Now be careful. Remember, I want you to be a 5-2 church. Now watch the one man. His gold has nothing to do with the situation. It's his heart. Because here's why. He doesn't know his master. Personally, I don't know how you can know Jesus Christ and not share him. I don't know how. Now, now I'm preaching to the choir here. Because guess what? Y'all are sharing the gospel and what's happening. Yeah. Waters are moving. Hello? Now, Jesus likes water. Haven't y'all noticed that? He didn't have an office. Read a Bible. Not one passage where it says, and disciples went into Jesus' office. <laughs> Not one passage in there. Jesus always hanging out in the wilderness, by the lake, in the town, in the city, up on the mountain, in the valley, but he never in office. You know why? He was at work with what the Father had given him. So Jesus is not going to ask you to do anything that he hadn't already done. God put grace in Jesus and sent him to earth, and he said, now go gain more. Wow. Check it out. But the guy who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now, church, if you want to see it really move, you got to give God what you have hidden. Sometimes you may have a hidden fear. Give it to Christ. Maybe you're, you, you're just scared that people won't like you. Man, a lot of us are scared that people won't like you. I'm a living testimony that people cannot like you and you can sleep well at night. And here's just what I just want to tell you in life. Some people are going to like you and some people aren't going to like you no matter what you do. So young people, especially you girls, you listen to me, do not spend your life trying to get people to like you. It's an exhausting experience. You know, you put your hair on this side and a group won't like that. Throw your hair on that side, another group won't like that. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I'm talking about? We got any seventh grade girls in here? Oh, y'all be careful. That's the meanest group of people that walk the face of the earth. <laughs> you women know I'm telling the truth. Gang up on each other, man, and it doesn't change at church either. Y'all seen it at church. You know, some 40-year-old woman walk in. She's still got it going on all together, and she's able to wear a dress. It's a little more, it's a five bags of gold dress. <laughs> she walks in with all the women, the other women do. I can't believe she wore that. You know what they're really saying? I can't believe I can't wear that. <laughs> See, we ought to celebrate instead of what? God gives everybody something. Make sense? I, hold on, I know this is tough, man. Listen, I don't have time to do all this preacher talk we used to do. The world's going to hell, and we got to get on it. Yeah. And guess what I know? Guess what I know? You saw 100 baptisms. If 25 more people get involved in sharing the gospel, you'll see more than that this year. It doesn't take a lot of people. It takes a few faithful people. When I look at Hillview, it's, it's a gospel church. I got a few people working hard so many can be blessed. That's the rhythm of Jesus. He fed 5,000 out of a lunchbox. And his 12 disciples were bewildered of how it was going to happen. Remember that story? But you know what Jesus said? I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to take what I can find. I'm going to put it to what? 
work. And that fed 5,000 folks. So here's what I want you to do, man. I want you to really see this. In the name of Jesus, never discount what God's given you. One's enough. One's enough. Because there's going to be an accountability day. There's going to be a day of judgment. Watch this. You know how many I got? One. I can talk. I've been able to talk all my life. When I was born, I was talking. My dad said when I was in the, in the grocery cart at two years old, I was, hi, 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 how you, hi, hi. He said, we thought you were going to be a judge, a politician, or a preacher. Thank God you made the right choice. But I love people. I mean, that's what God gave me. I love people. I've always loved people. They're weird. They're unusual. They're funny. They're hilarious. I love people. How many of y'all love people? They're funny. And I love people because, guess what? Jesus Christ gives everybody something. But he's coming back, folks. We sang about it tonight. He's coming back. There is going to be a day that the, servant, the servants will see the master. Now, and i got to ask you something. And I, ask, I ask people all over the world this, those who follow Jesus. And you may step into heaven before he comes back. Now, imagine this for a moment. You step into heaven. You get to the gates. I don't know what the gates look like. Pearly, whatever that is. But you look at heaven and you see all the saints that God has called over all these years. Will any of them be there because you invited them? Can you imagine stepping into the wonder of heaven and nobody is there because of the life you lived? Let me ask you a question. If the master goes, did you do what I asked you to do on the first step, go ye therefore, what are you going to be able to tell him? Yes. Well, Lord, you know, I had four kids, and I had this, and I was busy, and I had to go to college, had to graduate, had to get a master's degree, had to get a, I had to get a 5,000 square foot house because we needed that for four people. And uh, I needed this, and I needed that, and by the time I got to that, I kind of got old and rickety and just didn't get out much, and finally, boom, here I am. Are you going to say, Lord, uh, you see Joe over there? I, I talked to him. You saved him, but I got to talk to him and Billy Bob over there and Susie and Sharika and, and, and all these kind of cool people. There's a lot of Sharikas in my church, okay? <laughs> Those are familiar names in the congregation at Hillview, and I love it. You know why? God said I came to bless all people, Amen. not some of them. How many of them? All. all of them. Now, here's the problem. Not all people step into the blessing. But your question is, don't worry about all people. Are you going to step into the blessing? Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't worry about your neighbor right now. Are you doing what you're supposed to? Because I can hear the devil right now. He's going, well, if so-and-so would just step up, our church would be better. If Pastor Brian just not have that spiky hair, everything would be better. <laughs> Y'all just need to praise God he's got hair. Amen? Now let's go. <laughs> After a long time. I mean, he comes back when you don't think he's coming back. Yeah, I know you've never had this problem. One time I was in high school a long time ago. My parents were foolish enough to leave me with the house. And I thought they was coming back a lot longer, and they came back at a shorter time. And it was not a good judgment moment. Y'all got my drift. Y'all ever had that moment? You thought they was coming back, and they came back sooner than you thought. Any of y'all had that moment? Blake and I used to hang out. My son, Blake, and I used to hang out, and, 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 and sometimes Mom would take Clacy with her to relieve us, and, and uh, we'd be there by ourselves, and we were there by ourselves. I, I was helping him get ready for college. We'd throw pizza boxes all over the living room, socks, everything we could not do at the house when she was there. And one time, her cell phone didn't work, and she just appeared. And she, when she opened that door, that was a day of judgment. <laughs> so God gave me a few of these experiences to say, you know what? Watch this. Here's the way I always tell people. You will see Jesus before you think you will. Hmm? I'm going to die sooner than I think. You know, I still feel like I'm, I still feel that way, and I think that way. And then I see pictures. And I go, Who's that big old fat boy? <laughs> That's you, Reverend. Mm. Things have changed. But I still got to use what God's given me. Amen? 
Now the master comes back, and I want you to see he's going to settle accounts. He's going to settle account with Elkhorn. You say, Elkhorn, I gave you a building. How many acres you got here? You still got the same amount of acres? You buy some more. 16 acres. 16 acres. Tell me how many lost souls can be harvested per acre on 16 acres. It's a bunch. It's a, it's a slew. It's past a bunch. It's a slew of folk. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Guess what? Over half your county doesn't know Jesus. Y'all think you're bad off. 96,000 unchurched people in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Think that's bad. Lexington, 250,000 unchurched people. Louisville, more than that. So we got our work cut out for us. Because we got to go at once and do something with what he's given us. So Elkhorn, thank you for being a 5 2. Guess what happens if you're going to be 5 2 attitude? 5 2. You got 5, you got 2, you act like these two guys. Guess what happens to you? Same reward. I'm going to show you this. It's going to be amazing. It's going to, it's going to blow you all away. You say, well, is God just? I need, a, I need a just God. Yeah. Because the amount is irrelevant, but the attitude is everything. Amen. And, and look what he says. His master, he, he comes before his master, the man who received five bags of gold. He said, Master, you entrusted me with five, five bags of gold. See, I've gained five more. You know what his master replied? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness, your joy. You know why he did that? He knew his master. And not only did he know his master, he loved him. And then there was another sermon, the man who had two bags of gold. He came and said, Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold? See, I've gained two more. Now, if my math serves me correctly, brother, one dude's got ten and one guy's got four. The guy with four doesn't even have the initial amount of the guy that five had. Y'all follow me here? But look at what the master says. The guy who has four, he says, his master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's joy. So guess what? Some of you got two. Some of you got five. Some of you got one. Put it to work. Amen. And quit doing this. Here's what the devil will do. I'm going to tell you what the devil will do. I know that little sneaky rascal. He's always around. He's got perfect attendance in church. He's got a thousand plus years worth of Sunday school pens. And here's what he'll do. He'll say, look at old Greg over there. He can sing the blues for Jesus. You can't even spell blue. <laughs> You're worthless in the kingdom. That's a lie. You got something that'll show Jesus. Now, I got to warn you because we're fixing to wrap up. Don't try to make an excuse on day of judgment. It will go bad for you. And you can't blame it on anybody on the day of judgment. I know what some of you are going to do. You've been to therapy and you're going to go, well, Lord, I came from a dysfunctional family. <laughs> He's going to go, really? Like I didn't know? <laughs> let, let me tap you in to what I was trying to tell you. The whole world is dysfunctional. <laughs> and I came so that they could become Functional. You say, well, Lord, I was codependent. He goes, I know. That's why I died on the cross. Well, Lord, I was attention deficit. <laughs> and he's going to say, no, what should have happened is your daddy wore your butt out a couple of times. Yeah. Is that too strong? No, Hold on, I can talk about attention deficit. I took my test and made over 100. <laughs> Just my dad carried a cure with him at all times. <laughs> He had a cure. He got my attention and healed me immediately at once. <laughs> you know what he let me know? There's a father. My, I was very privileged, and, and, I, and, I, and I take that gift that I've been given, and I hope I bless people with it. My father was a father. He taught me there's somebody going to be in charge. And that helped me realize that God's in charge. 
and I'm not in charge, I'm a servant, but as a servant, we get to live a full and abundant life. Now, this one guy, please, Elkhorn, do not go near this stuff. Pastor, you get a thought like this, in the name of Jesus, may, may it be gone. Now, let me tell you where the devil's going to play on you. About two years from now, and he, you know, if you've got to build a building and all that stuff, you just stay out of it. You've got people here that know how to build. Do you know how to build? No. Good, then don't, don't mess with it. You know how many keys I got to our facility? One. Goes to my door. People ask me in church, where's such and such? I said, you have asked the absolute wrong person. <laughs> I said, go ask Rodney. He's our hippie that lives on campus that knows where everything is. <laughs> he scares people, but he's efficient. <laughs> I don't know. What's this? Because my job's not to, to maintain church buildings. My job is to make sure people hear the word of God so that they might be safe, so they might be energized, so they might go out of the church building and change the world. Don't make your pastor do stuff pastors aren't supposed to do because they're really incapable of doing it. <laughs> have y'all seen some ugly churches in town? No, come on, seriously. Have y'all seen some churches? I mean, just you wonder, who built that? I'll tell you, the pastor. <laughs> There's not one degree in building at seminary. See, it takes all of us to make it happen. Amen? Amen. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. Well, the guy who had one, guess what he does? And you all have heard people like this. Yeah, I hear it all. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> then the man who had one bag of gold came. Now watch this. This sounds like the news. Master, he said, I knew that you're a hard man, harvesting where you'd not sown and gathering where you'd not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. Does that sound familiar? I hear this. My kids in our church, we got a lot of kids in our church. Man, I, I stay on them all the time. Especially when they come to me and say, Pastor, I can't do that. I say, what? Well, I'm choosing not to do that. Now we're speaking the truth. Makes people, which is the only reason we got a bunch of young people that don't know what to do is we allowed it to happen. We say, well, we don't want to hurt their self-esteem. Well, I've read the Bible in not one place that didn't talk about self-esteem. In fact, it said my self-esteem was worthless. And in Christ, I can do all things. Not in me, I can do all things. In Christ, I can do all things. See, this guy didn't know his master. I'm telling you, don't you run that on day of judgment. God going to spank you. Elkhorn is giving you 16 acres in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Guess what he expects you to do with that, brother? Everything possible. Whatever. Y'all get crazy. Y'all are already crazy. You're meeting in a barn with a cross in the middle of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hold on. I've corrupted some young brothers in this state. I was in Mayfield last year. I was in Mayfield, Kentucky. Y'all ever been in Mayfield, Kentucky? Yeah. I mean, you'd have no reason to go unless God sent you there. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Nineveh. <laughs> I've never seen a brochure. Come and vacation in Mayfield, Kentucky. Have you all? It's Mayfield, Kentucky. This young brother, he got all excited about Jesus, wanted to reach every crazy person inside the, inside, inside the that, what, what county is that? Graves County. And uh, they go and buy a horse barn with a dirt floor. A horse barn. It had horse exhaust all in it when they bought it. <laughs> so they had to shovel before they could preach. And they pour concrete, and they make a church in Easter Sunday morning in this horse barn. They had over 1,300 people who gathered. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because I want you all to get this. Who gathered in five services. They got the coolest baptistry I've ever seen. They got a bunch of welders in the church. And when you go in, it looks like MMA church, man. I mean, everything's heavy duty. And I said, Pastor, this is a heavy duty church. He said, we got some heavy duty sinners here. <laughs> I met a girl, she's sweet as could be, but she had one of those Ducks Unlimited tattoos on her arm. I'd never seen that. I said, I am in Mayfield, Kentucky. <laughs> and you know what? She was following Jesus Christ with all her heart, soul, mind, and body with a Ducks Limited tattoo on her arm. Praise God. We had a trap shoot that afternoon, and she won. <laughs> she could shoot. Don't mess with that girl. She weighed 100 pounds and kill you in a heartbeat. Be careful. His master... His master replied, who, his master replied, who replied, the master replied, God will speak to us. And I live, I live in a holy fear every day. 
Dear God, may I do everything in this day that you've called me to do because you know what? I, I live like this. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. That's right. I mean, I really don't. You ought to see me drive. I really don't. <laughs> Anything could happen at any time, but I want to go out with Jesus on my lips. I want to go out with Jesus in my mind. I want to go out thinking about Jesus in my heart. I want to go out loving the people that, that God put me around. So then when he looks at me and said, Ayers, what'd you do? I said, well, let's not talk about all of it, Lord. Let's pull out the good things that I did. <laughs> you know what he's going to say? That's all I know about. Because I put all those other things on the cross. Amen. And I left them in the grave. Yeah. And I, I want to talk to you. What did you do with your resurrected life? Now, I'm asking you a question. God gave us something a lot better than gold, a resurrected life. I'm not who I used to be, brother. You're not who you used to be, are you? Right. See, I love living for Jesus because I'm not what I used to be. I kind of know what I am, but then I praise God because I don't know what I'm going to be. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Amen? I don't know about y'all, but I kind of look forward to that glorified body, don't y'all? Yeah. I'm going to eat Snickers for 1,000 years and never gain an ounce. <laughs> I'm going to say, Lord, I want Snickers in my room. I'm going to eat them suckers and keep a six-pack in that glorified body. <laughs> Ladies, you can eat all the chocolate you want and wear whatever you want. What do you think about that? It's called heaven. It, watch this. And really the reason we get a glorified body because what's inside of us is finally going to take over all of us. See what I'm saying? Because we battle with this stuff. Now, be careful. Let me show you what happened. The master replied, these are not my words. Please don't email me or tweet me or whatever. These are not my words. These are words of the Holy Scripture. You wicked, lazy servant. How politically correct is that for you? And you know what, Elkhorn? He can't say that about Elkhorn Baptist Church. Thank you, Pastor. See how it's not real silent in this room? Most places I preach when I say that, it gets real silent. And the reason it gets real silent is because I'm talking to a group of wicked, lazy servants. Young people, did you hear that word? Lazy. That ain't called cool. It ain't called finding yourself. It ain't called universally experiencing my journey so I can discover who I am. Let me tell you what God calls it. I'm going to tell you what God calls it. Lazy. Your mom and daddy dropped $60,000 to send you to college. You better have a job. You say, well, I can't find one. Minute Mart's hiring all the time. Start there and own it later. That used to be America. That's why I love Hispanic people. I love Hispanic people. They're Americans. I got some Hispanic friends. They came, didn't have nothing in their pocket. They finally conjured up enough to go over to Harbor Freight and buy them a $49.95 leaf blower. A year later, I see them running in the Escalade with five mowers behind them and 60 leaf blowers on the side. <laughs> you know what them brothers figured out? You know what them brothers figured out? Rich people are scared of leaves. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And they didn't complain. Watch this. Here's the difference in Hispanics. They don't complain about what they don't have. They take what they do have and make it happen. I got a friend named Jake. He lived in Kosovo, lived in a communist country, so he already understands socialism. He's scared to death right now. The other night I saw him. I said, Jake, what are you so scared about? He said, I've seen all this before. I came from this. He said, I came where the government came in my restaurant and took money out of my cash register. And he said, you can't do nothing about it. He said, this is the greatest country ever. He said, I came to this country with two kids, $1,200 in my pocket, and a baby in my wife's womb. And he runs one of the finest restaurants in Bowling Green. I said, Jake, that sounds like you know Jesus. He says, I'm Muslim. Don't start that on me. I said, you know I'm never going to quit. He said, I know you're the craziest guy I've met. Jake, you know what he did? He understands Jesus' principle. Take what you have and do what? You know what he did to open that restaurant? He taught soccer. This is a grown man. He was almost 40 years old. He babysitted. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get to that moment. That's right. So I have a hard time listening to all this whining going on, how you can't make it, how you can't do this, how you can't do that. You know, when, when you go at once, you get in the dirt and you plant it. Man, I'm talking to farmers here. How many of y'all farmed here? Well, let me help you with it. This is the same principle applies in church, man. 
you're not going to see a harvest till you plow the field. And I don't know about you all, but I plowed before. And when I came in after plowing all day long, I did not look pretty. And I wasn't in a great mood. I'd been bounced on that Massey Ferguson, the guy I worked for. He's so cheap he'd never get us a tractor big enough to get it done quick. We're out there in that 35 horsepower. It's bogging down. You're being bounced on a seat. Now, my other buddy, he got to work for the other farm. He's up there in one of them big John Deere's listening to his eight-track player. I'm a little older, okay? I mean, he's having a big time, air conditioning. But you know what? you got to plow. you got to plant. you got to invest. you got to take risk. you got to fail. But this guy said this. He said, man, I'm scared. He said, I'm scared. Here's what he said. He said, you wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvested where I would not sown and gathered where I would not scattered seed. You going to make an accusation like me about that? You going to tell me what kind of God I am? You think you know me? He said, well then, you should have put my money on deposit with interest with the bankers so that I would try return. At least you would have had interest. But you didn't know who I am. I think the master's heart was broken that he had given the servant this money and he didn't even know who he was. He didn't know what he had done. He didn't know how he lived. And then he makes an accusation. See, here's what I want to tell you. This is what's very scary in this nation today. Blaming others will never lead to your salvation. And I hear it every day. It's nobody's fault. Well, it's somebody's fault kind of like pornography it's a multi-billion dollar business and nobody looks at it it's amazing somewhere you got to square up and say what i want to be what you want me to be master i know this happens a lot happens a lot in principles of life how many y'all know people that took what they had and made it happen one of my favorite ministry heroes right now is a kid I got to coach. He's a kid from Cambodia. His mama didn't have anything to do with him. He got to go to the University of Pikeville. They'd never seen an Asian up there in Pikeville. I read him this parable. I said, his name's Yupin. I said, Yup. He said, you've been like a daddy to me. And he said, and that ain't always been good. I said, are you ready to go? He said, yes, sir, I am. I said, I'll see you in Thanksgiving, and then I'll see you in December. And I said, that, break, that grade card better be worthy of your opportunity. He said, well, I didn't play this year football. I said, I don't care about football. I said, you're not going to the NFL. You'll never step on an NFL field. You'll never make a dime playing football. That's a way to get in the classroom. You know what he did? Came in, he's kind of put his head down like this because he had to come to the office because I'm like his daddy, and I want to be like his daddy. I said, I need to see those grades. He said, I know. He said, I think you might like them. I said, really? He said, 3-9. Now, hold on. All the professional educators and all the testing and their analysis said he couldn't do it. But you see, once he became convinced that he had something and he invested that something, he started reaping that reward. And that's what we're missing. Many of you are listening to what they say instead of what God has said into you. My second grade teacher told me I'd never amount to nothing. Back then, teachers could say that and not get fired. Because I had a big, fat, remember those big old fat Albert pencils you used to use? You know what I'm talking about? Big old, that, 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 this is, this, I'm old. I'm old. What's this? When I was in school, they didn't even have cell phones. I mean, we didn't call Sarah up or nothing. There's a few in here who still remember Sarah. Huh? Sarah, can you get Billy Joe down the road? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brother, you've lived a long time, amen? Well, I couldn't make my words right, and they didn't know what that was back then. I flipped my words around backwards and forwards and stuff, but I was still a smart aleck kid, even in second grade. Seventh grade, I looked at her, and I said, ma'am, I'll have people write for me. So I personally called her and told her about the five people that I employ full-time that write for me. <laughs> and I also sent her a copy of my book. Because you know what? I got tired of people telling me what I couldn't do. Right. And Elkhorn, here's where I want to end. Don't listen to what they say. Right. And we do that too much. 
They tell us we can't do this and we can't do that. Why not? Why not? You know what God said? All things are possible for those who believe. All, how many of y'all believe that? I'm an all things possible guy. Now here's why. I'm getting older now, not old, older. That's what I've learned at 22 years at Hillview. Everything that everybody said wouldn't work, worked. We weren't smart. We weren't special. If you come to our church, we're very ordinary folks. In fact, the community was blown away when a bunch of ordinary folks went debt free. Because you know what they forgot? One invested with fervor yields a greater reward than five not invested at all. I'll take ones and twos that'll go out and work the harvest over a bunch of fives that want to sit and talk about their five all day long. Yeah, you notice nobody talked about what they had. Hello? They put to work what they had. Have y'all got this far along on your discernment? Most people that tell you they're holy aren't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you have to tell me that you know Jesus, you might need to get worried. If you have to tell me how spiritual you are, I don't buy all that jazz. Thank God all those people have finally left our church. They wore me out. <laughs> we had all these intercessor prayers, man. I tell you what, and it amazed me. Every time they pray, God and them would be in agreement. It worried me because I knew they were in the wrong direction. In fact, I had these intercessory prayer people. Five of them came to my office and told me five different directions that God had demanded for us to go that day. So I told the last one, y'all go back and pray and tell God to make up his mind, and I'll do it. <laughs> But see, here's what I know. He's already told me. He gave me a book. That's right. That's right. You know what I love about God? He didn't make it a Ph.D. book. He didn't make it an academic book. He made it a book where people like Steve Ayers could understand it. Yeah. He said, hey, there were these three dudes. They were servants. They said, hey, I gave them gold, one, five, one, two, one, one. And guess what? The two that invested had a great reward, and the one that did nothing didn't get squat. Is that clear enough? Yeah. Young people, some of y'all just got married. You want to have a great marriage? You've got to invest. Husbands, you've got to lead and you've got to love. That means you've got to be flou buy flowers even though you don't understand it. <laughs> and I agree with you, they die. Why are they important? Because they are. <laughs> and that's called investing. Yeah. <laughs> has nothing to do with flowers. It has to do with doing what the master would want you to do, to love and adorn. Does that make sense? Young people, you get to school, and if you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you academically achieve as much as possible. Okay? And if you're supposed to go to college, go to college. And if you're not supposed to go to college, find your gift and do something right. Not everybody, not everybody needs to go to college. Make sense? Some people need to fix air conditioners because you make a whole lot more money fixing air conditioners than you do going to college. Because when it gets tough in a bad economy, you don't need a therapist, but you want your AC. <laughs> See, everybody's important, Amen. I don't know about you all. I don't ever think about a NASA, NASA rocket science PhD when my truck breaks down. I want a mechanic that knows what he's doing. Of course, now he has to be a NASA PhD to fix the truck. You see, we all got something special, and I'm telling you, we've forgotten that. I love everybody, everything. You know who I loved at school more than anybody? Well, I know those fancy teachers, cafeteria ladies, my favorite people when I was in school. I loved every one of them. I mean, I loved all the cafeteria ladies. You know why? They did something worthy. They gave you lunch. <laughs> and I loved all my cafeteria ladies because the more you love them, the more food you get. <laughs> <laughs> See, some of my buddies, they didn't figure that out. I was always sweet to them. Miss Floyd, she'd go, would you like another piece of pizza? You remember them square cardboard pizzas? <laughs> and they wonder why we have diseases today. Do you know any other generation that ate square pizzas and corn? Where else have you had that? My wife has never gone, hey, would you like some pizza and corn tonight? She's never said that. Crazy. Let me tell you, be careful here, though, Elkhorn. We got to get out of here. Y'all got to go to school in the morning. We got to be good. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. Now, here's what I want you to understand. God will use a church to reach the county. If you decide to not be it, he will take what you have 
and he will send it to where it goes to work. Now hear me. If I got some fellow pastors in here, that's what's happening. So instead of whining about what's going on down the road, ask God why it's not going on here, and he'll probably say, what are you doing what I gave you? Why are you looking down the road at what I gave them instead of investing what I gave you? Does that make sense? I got this radical idea. If every church would just be what it was supposed to be, the state would be changed. Isn't that cool? Y'all got enough churches on this one road right here to win the city. I've never seen so many churches on one road in my life. <laughs> Would everybody get mad at each other and build another church? That used to be the church growth plan. Yeah, I know it was. Y'all get, y'all get, I see y'all tense up when I talk that honestly. Oh my gosh, he said that? Yeah. You know why people get mad in church and leave churches? Because they don't know the master. Watch this, I'm going to blow y'all away. I don't like everything we do at Hillview Heights Church. And people ask me, they go all the time, they go, well, I don't like that song we sung. I said, I don't either. And they go, well, you're the pastor. I said, but somebody liked it. Somebody heard Jesus in that. I said, I've been saved for a long time. I don't care about songs anymore. If I don't like that song, I got an iPod thing. I can play what I want to hear when I get my truck. I don't worry about that stuff. And I'm telling you today, guys, I want to end on this. God has richly blessed you all in this, in this city, in this church. Keep exploding, amen? Thank you all for letting me come up here and pester you tonight. I love you, church. I do. I pray for it all the time. I love your pastor. I was so excited when you all got Brian. He came down to a, I have a small conference, invitation only. Do you notice that? Here's why. I just got tired of hearing pastors that don't want to do nothing. I got tired of hearing ones because here's what they always sound like. Well, our church, we just can't grow. We're located in a bad place. Well, we got old people in our church. Can't grow, they're just all old. I'm like, you stupid guy. Old people are rich, put them to work. Hey, Amen. I love older people. What's this? This is crazy. Hillview Heights Church, when I first came, we were supposed to be that young radical church. We're the largest senior adult church in the city. 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's a sea of white hair rocking and rolling to Jesus. <laughs> and they still don't have rhythm. After 20 years, they still don't have a lick of rhythm. I just laugh. If it wasn't for the beautiful African-American people that were sent to us, we'd never have any rhythm in our church. In fact, I always knew the Holy Spirit had descended in our congregation when we went in rhythm. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't matter. I, I can be out of rhythm, but God never is. And many just speaks into us. So, so I want to tell you all three things I observe here. Keep your spirit. That's the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Celebrate the gifts God has give, uh, given others, but never worship them. Never worship the gifts. Bags of gold are irrelevant. I showed you that. But invest who you are in the kingdom of God and keep doing that to your last breath. Make sense? Because the investment changes over time. You heard your pastor. He's up here, you know. Well, Dr. Ayers is a father in the ministry to me. <laughs> Ain't nobody said that 20 years ago. In fact, 20 years ago, nobody even wanted to say they were a friend of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> He's coming after me, boy. The convention, they thought, man, that's crazy. You can't do church like that. And guess what God did? He was changing things. I was like, have y'all ever read the Bible? Jesus did weird stuff. What if Jesus came to Elkhorn and changed the water into wine here? What would the wet, dry people do then? <laughs> I'm serious. Jesus did weird stuff. You know, some guy comes in with a withered arm, and Jesus goes, let me shake your hand. No, let me shake your hand, and it straightens up all of a sudden. You reckon people would be sitting there, well, that's nice. <laughs> Get on Facebook. I bet some people would be tweeting. Yeah. See the kids over here. Crooked arm guy, straight arm, crazy, get over here. <laughs> but hold on, let me ask you a question. Why aren't we that kind of disturbance to the world? 
I'm just telling you, if you just live your life, it's amazing. I've been very blessed. Uh, I got to marry somebody that was like really holy, and nice and sweet and very patient and kind. If not, I'd be divorced. And uh, we got to spend some time this fall together in, in another country. And there was a bunch of these young couples hanging around that just got married. <laughs> and so we're just hanging out. having a baby. She and I have a big time. I'm crazy wherever I am. I never change. I'm the same everywhere. So I'm having a big time. and got all these newlyweds coming in. And they were looking at us and they go, did y'all just get married? I said, I could be your daddy. <laughs> I said, you've either been having too many of them little umbrellas or, or something's messing with your sunglasses are off. So they laughed. They said, they, they said how long y'all been married? I said, 28 years. And they were floored. Hmm. See, here's what I want you to know, man. If you've been married a long time, brother, how long have you been married? Now, hold on. <laughs> hold on. That is radical in the 21st century. Yeah. Now, hold on, I got to check. Yeah. Same woman, right? Because yeah. <laughs> I've got some people that have been married 50 years, they've just done it five times, okay? See what I'm saying? I'm talking what's radical is the same person. Now, hold on. That's the testimony. Guess who needs to be doing marriage counseling here? Them. Because guess what they know how to do? They married. Yeah! Why do you want to send them to some counselor who's been divorced ten times? All they know how to do is get divorced. <laughs> I can't figure out this world. Yeah. Those of you all that got long-term marriages, man, you ought to be pouring into these young couples. Yes, amen. amen. You say, well, Pastor Steve, you don't understand. I got aches and pains. No, I understand you got aches and pains. Pour. pour. <laughs> and pour quickly. Because it ain't getting better. I don't know what you're resting for. It doesn't get any better. Better do it while you can do it. Amen? Yes, amen. Right now, I think you know what God would say to Elkhorn? You invested. You moved to a building so more people could get in. You trusted a crazy man to be your pastor. He's crazy. You know what he thinks about all the time? People getting saved. It's always on his mind crazy. He called me Pastor Steve. You know, he used to do all that formal stuff. I said, just call me Steve. He said, Steve, I tell you what, man, I'm just excited. Da, 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 da. And I'm going like, thank you, Jesus. Because guess what I hear about most of the time? Well, we just can't grow or reach nobody. <laughs> the Lord's abandoned us. I remember a church like that in 1991. It's called Elkhorn Baptist Church. And they were sitting there on the premises being proper, nice, having communion once a quarter. We don't need to remember him more than that. <laughs> we got important things to do like business meetings. You know what y'all did? Y'all traded in your business meetings and got on with the business. Yeah. Stay there! See, I quit having business meetings because everybody gets mad at business meetings. So I just thought if we don't have them, nobody would get mad. And it's worked for 22 years. We do crazy things at Hillview. We put, like, business people in charge of the business. Works. They know how to do business. They carried me to the bank. We had to get a loan. I went into places in the bank I'd never seen before, and these guys do it all the time. We came out of the bank, and the guy that was handling this thing, his, his uh, face was white, and he said, what? He said, I've never gotten a loan like that. I said, really? I said, is that good? He said, it's beyond good. And I said, well, let me tell you what. I said, you ain't never gotten a loan for Jesus before. Yeah. Mm. I said, you're not on your project. You're on his project. Yeah. That's right. And so guess what? Whether you got five, you got two, you got one. Invested in his project, amen? Yeah. So let's pray tonight. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, pastor is going to be up here. He, he, you just you pray. Okay, pray. Jesus wants to save you. Is that cool? And if everybody's saved in here, that's okay. Guess what we've had? We've had a rally of the saved. Amen? We've had a rally of the saved. Now the saved got to do something with a rally. Amen? And that means go out there and love people. How many of y'all tell people about Jesus? Some of you do. You can't baptize 100 people without somebody talking. Now, you do not have to be loud like me. Okay? My mama's one of the best witnesses I know. You know how she does it? She writes letters. 
Over her lifetime, I literally, I bet she's written over 500,000 letters to people. She's an introvert. Her witness is her letters. And Jesus uses them. You think that's biblical? Paul wrote letters. Now for you guys, it might be holy tweets. <laughs> okay? And when you're on Facebook... It ought to be young men and women that are having a blast in the kingdom of God and the pictures ought to be the glory of God and not the corruption of this world. By the way, be careful what you put on Facebook. You know why? Guess what's going to happen to you all? You're going to get old. And you're going to become moms. And you're going to have teenage daughters one day. And they'll be looking at old archive files of Facebook. <laughs> and you'll be nailed. <laughs> Make sense? See, I had an out. My son came in and said, Dad, I, I met some people that knew you back in the day. I said, they lied. <laughs> <laughs> Their word against my words. <laughs> huh? But today there'd be pictures. May our pictures be of God's work in our lives. May our tweets illustrate that there's hope in the world even when everybody else thinks it's hopeless. Elkhorn, welcome all people to Jesus Christ. Thank you for welcoming people. I, I'm, I just want to, I, I'm very thankful to you all. I always encourage people. I thank you all that you're not a one-dimensional congregation. I thank you when I look around here, you all don't look alike. You all don't think alike. You all don't eat alike. You all, all don't have the same colors because the kingdom of God is high definition. Isn't that cool? It's high definition. And I don't know how God does it, but it's crazy. I never talked about foreign missions in our church. I just talked about the mission, and we speak 13 different languages at Hillview, including Kentucky. Yeah. What's really cool is I have a lot of African Americans in the church, but now guess what we have? Africans. Yeah. Joshua and Caleb from Kenya. And they don't talk like African Americans. It's a dear pastor, I want to know today. <laughs> and I'm like, them English people really messed you brothers up. I'm telling you, I want to help you. I want to help you get on down here. I love it. Their mother came. Her mother's a Christian. Her father's an atheist. He's a professor. These two boys come to church every, day, every, every time the doors are open. Because you know what? Their mama from Kenya when she walked into the church, she came up to me and she said, Pastor, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, ma'am, I hope to. I mean, this is a heavy-duty sister. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you tell she reeked with God. Some people, you can smell God on them. You know what I'm talking about? I could smell the Holy Spirit on her. And I was at full attention. I mean, it's like talking to a, I was talking to a mama. Now, listen, there's one thing you don't mess with, a mama. <laughs> like back when we had that women's missionary union, they'd come and ask me, what do you think about this? Whatever you girls say. I never mess with that. Don't ever mess with that. I'm smart. Don't ever mess with that. And she said, uh, I want my boys in the influence of the Holy Spirit, and this is their place. I will be back. They better be here. Yes, ma'am. You know what those boys are raised by? A mama filled with the Holy Ghost. They have five bags of gold. God has entrusted Elkhorn Baptist Church for a portion of lost people in the city of Campbellsville. And so, all I'm saying is win who you're supposed to win. I don't know who they are, and guess what? You don't either. So here's the way around that. Tell everybody, and we'll see what happens. All right? Let's pray. It might be you tonight. Lord Jesus, as we close this out and give an invitation to receive, to invest, and to go, I just ask right now, Lord, for, I just, you can look at me, you don't have to close your eyes. You, you can listen, just listen. <coughs> if you have never asked Jesus Christ into your life, here's what I want you to know. He wants to save you. You say, well, Pastor, how do you know that? Well, he said so in his Bible, but if you don't believe the Bible, there's too much evidence, even in history, that, that Jesus, his name is still here. His name strikes fear into the atheist, to the disbeliever. It's amazing to me. 
Atheists aren't scared of Muslims. They're not scared of Buddhists. They're not scared of Hindus. But a plastic baby Jesus lying in a manger drives them out of their mind. They're scared of nativity scenes. Could it be that even a plastic baby Jesus is a reminder that he is real? No matter what we say, he's still what? Real. Now, you may have seen some people that followed Jesus do some stupid things. I agree with you. It happens. But I don't know about you. I was a child of my mother and father, and I did some stupid things. Did you all do that when you were growing up? And they still called me son. And I had two children, and I loved them dearly. But guess what? They've done some stupid things along the way. And I've always called them son and daughter. So there's a master that no longer calls us servant, but he calls us son or daughter of this great kingdom. And so if you've never had that experience, why don't you tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died on a cross. I believe you've risen from the grave. And I trust you to save me. And if that's too many words, this works. Jesus, help. He'll take it from there. It's that real. I don't know anything more important than being saved. I still don't know anything more important. I preach two or three funerals a week. Last Saturday morning, I preached one of an old guy named Arthur Vick. Arthur wore a derby hat, and he was 77 years old. Born in New York, New York, and ended up in Auburn, Kentucky. Now, only God could make that possible. He had one of the greatest testimonies I heard. They said Arthur believed in Jesus so much he told every bootlegger about him. <laughs> I want to be like Arthur, unashamed of the gospel. So if you don't believe, receive him. Now, if you are believing and following him, we got a little prayer tonight, okay? Lord, may I invest, or if you will, reinvest who I am to the great work that you're doing here at Elkhorn. Okay? So Elkhorn, here's what I'm going to tell you. Keep worshiping with fervor, studying with intensity, loving one another as Jesus loves us, build relationships. Okay? Pray, 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 and when you're prayed out, pray a little more. And you know what? Give everything God has given you unto the kingdom. And you know what? You won't need the thermometer. Because if everybody does what they're supposed to do, the glory of God will be revealed to the city of Campbellsville. You believe me? Now here's all I can tell you, young brother. Tonight, if you come and just receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I've been a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed man. No doubt about it. God saved an old hardhead like me, and I've lived a life that is really unbelievable. And, and you know what? I've never seen this happen anywhere in the world. I'm not talking about just the state of Kentucky. Anywhere in the world. I've never had a human being come and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. And Jesus go, sorry, you're not on the list. I've never heard him say that to anybody. And I can hear him sometimes, even with these little ears. I can hear him. Ron, I've never one time seen a man or a woman, no matter what their age or where they come from, say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. And Jesus go, no, I can't do it. You know what he says? Those who believe in their heart and confess with their mouth will be saved. You can count on it. So let's stand together. Some of you come tonight. We might need to push these chairs back a little bit. Thank God that they move. And just kneel down for a minute. You might want to come and just touch this cross tonight and say, God, you've given me everything. In fact, Pastor, I'll tell you what we're going to do. If it's okay with you. Is it okay with you? So I know we've got to roll. Some of you night before you leave. Everybody night before you leave. Now, if you don't believe, you need to come see Pastor, all right? Come see me. But if you've already received him, Lord Jesus, you've given me everything. And now I'm going to walk out these doors. And I'm going to do something. Amen. I'm going to do something.
And I'm telling you, watch this. I don't want you to be impressive. I don't want you to be spectacular. Just be faithful. And guess what? It'll all work out. Guess what some of you are supposed to do for God? Barbecue chicken. Hmm? I got an old guy in my church. All he does is barbecue. He's baptized over 35 people barbecuing. Because when you barbecue with him, you know, he does stuff like this. That's a hot fire, isn't it? Not as hot as hell. Where are you going? <laughs> he just sat crazy. He's a good buddy of mine. He tells stories about where he used to be. Now look at him and say, Timmy, I don't even remember that guy. And this year as we were coming out of the field at the end of the year, he looked at me and he said, Rev, Rev Dog's what he got. He said, Rev Dog? He said, what? He said, I don't remember that guy anymore either. Oh, See what I'm saying? I don't remember who you were lost, but I love fellowshipping with you saved. Amen. Amen. So if you don't mind, you come up here and touch this cross. Say, God, you've given me everything. I'm going to make a commitment to go do something. You let the Holy Spirit tell you what it is. Give faithfully. Let's get this dream off the ground. If you need to get this building built, that should be no big deal. A lot of you guys know how to put up stuff and make it happen. Amen? Amen? But everybody needs to be telling somebody about Jesus. Amen? Amen. In your own way. So I'm not asking you to go knock on doors. I'm asking some of you to talk to your hunting buddies, your four-wheel drive buddies, your ATV buddies, your lake buddies. Meet them where they are and tell them about where they can be. Amen. Lord, draw us to this altar. Those that aren't saved, may your grace save them. Those that haven't been baptized, may they come and say, I'm, that's my next step. Those that need to just come even by the pastor and say, Pastor, I got a lot more in me that I haven't let go of. I'm going to let go of it and put it to work. So in the name of Jesus, may the saints rejoice and may the city be changed. Let's come. Let's serve him. Thank you, Lord.